so today we are going to be something that's highly requested. I don't know if it's that highly requested. Lots of people have been requesting it. We've gotten lots of emails. Okay. Well, basically, you guys want to know what we do to get like internet and Wi-Fi on the road, and yeah. so that you can do like a job or like your work or whatever, or like your school. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever you want to do, we're gonna be figuring out. We're gonna be showing you how we like use Wi-Fi. Okay, thank you for the recent like, traction on our channel. It's been really. Great. All right, Becky, what do you think first? We go over Wi-Fi extenders. Sure. Yeah, yeah Wi-Fi extenders. So, I, I guess if you don't know, a Wi-Fi extender is something you attach in your RV, and here's ours. Uh, and the idea of this is it will pick up a Wi-Fi signal from another source like let's say your campground has wi-fi and it will boost that signal so you get more of it in your camper um this is the one we have and as a wi-fi extender i don't recommend it <laughs> so, so that well why would you show it to me well what it the problem with the wi-fi extender in a campground setting is most of the wi-fi in a campground is getting drawn on by so many campers that it's worthless. So you're extending a worthless signal. Now this particular one has a cable that we have wired it up to this, we put here, and we used an existing hole on top that the radio antenna went through, and we have a little antenna on top. And so it has that capability, but what we really use it for is our wireless router in our camper using a hotspot um, to feed it. So and we'll kind of talk about that a little bit more. So I don't recommend this really, you know, ha have we ever used it? I think once or twice it's come in handy uh, for actually extending Wi-Fi. So don't recommend it for that, but it's actually been great for us to use as a network hub. So I do recommend it for that. But to do that, you need another source of Wi-Fi. So if we don't use the um, Wi-Fi extender, then how do we even get our Wi-Fi? Good question. Uh, one of the first things we tried was a bunch of little hotspots like this one. You probably can get them through your carrier. Um, you notice there's no external antennas on this. Um, it, it gets reception about as good as your cell phone. So if you got cell phone coverage, this will probably work. Um, a couple problems. One, if you buy it through your carrier, it won't be unlimited data, which means it'll throttle at some point. Maybe you have to use 10 gigabytes or 20 gigabytes. At some point, it will slow down. And when the kids were doing school with video, and I'm on work conferences with video, and we're watching TV and movies off of our Apple TV, uh, that throttling just doesn't work for us. So what we have found is you can get a hotspot through a third party and we use travel data and we'll put their link below and this is the one that we have uh and it's plugged in right now uh and it has a little better antenna system on it which means we've never really had a trouble we had to use our cell phone booster we'll talk about cell phone boosters in a minute but this it uses t-mobile but unlike if we bought it directly through t-mobile it's truly unlimited there's no throttling and we have run multiple video conferences going on at the same time. We watch movies on Apple TV or, or other streaming services. Uh, the kids are on the internet a lot. Have we ever had any trouble with it, Beckett? Not really. I mean, sometimes. And here comes the problem. And that's why I'm updating. I'm sending this before we have our other videos done. Got here to Fort Wilderness. Worked great the first night. And then just stopped. So I go to tech support. And the only tech support through this company called Travel Data is to put in electronic tickets and they text you. It's not voice. And the response time was really, I mean, they got on there, but, you know, 15, 20 minutes, hour between text. The support when you need it is not there. The product would probably be okay. The service is good when it runs. But eventually you will have a problem. And if you don't have good support, if right, there are back from our trip to Disney and uh, uh, continuation on the issues we had with our travel data process, uh, this modem that they provide clearly had gone out. Um, in fairness, I'm not gonna count that as a travel data issue. Uh, it's just actually considered a fairly reliable, good um, modem that you can buy to use with pretty much any carrier. Uh, still fault travel data for their service. Uh, they did respond, they did work, but between the hours and the fact they only respond through instant messenger, 
um, it's just not practical when you need help right away. What I did find in this process, though, is I bought this on Amazon, so it would be here ready for us. And I paid about $100 for it. This is actually a newer version of this. But when you order for the travel data, if you buy theirs, it's over $200 for an older version. I got this one actually as a backup because travel data is sending me a new one um, under a warranty claim that they did allow me to extend a warranty claim. So that was good. But um, I, I wanted to go ahead and have one in place because it's going to take a little while for theirs to come in. And I also wanted a backup in case we ever had this happen again. So I took the SIM card out of this unit, put it in this unit, uh, went into the settings, um, and had it do a automatic setup and the Wi-Fi and the data is working perfectly, flawlessly. So it wasn't the travel data service that I was having trouble with, which is actually T-Mobile service. It was this unit. And I don't fault travel data for this unit going out. Who knows what happened? Maybe we had a surge. Uh, you know, we've been using it nonstop for a year. Who knows? What I do know is they overcharge for it. You can buy the same one on Amazon. So if it was me and I could, I'd buy one on Amazon and then order the um, SIM card from Travel Data. Plug it in, you're good to go. But in my recommendation, if you're going to use Travel Data, which it's still probably one of the better products out there, um, I would have a backup. I'd buy it on Amazon uh, and um, just know that if you do have your uh, service go out and you need support, you're only going to get it during, you know, 8 to 8. Their internet says 8 to 10, but they closed at 8. We learned that. You'll get it from 8 to 8, and it'll be by text message or instant messenger, which, you know, it'll be an hour or two between messages. They will walk you through anything. Uh, well, I think when we first ordered this, now we, the, we got the one that has the absolute most data and the biggest one we could, so we get the antennas and stuff. And it cost, I think originally it was like $75 a month. You don't have to commit, so you can just buy one month at a time while you're on the road. Right now, it's $85 a month. They went up about $10 a month uh, a few months back. But I'll put a link below. I think that link may save you some money. Uh, in fair disclosure, um, I, I think we get some sort of credit or something if you buy off that link. So if you don't want that to happen, you can buy it off another source, but we highly recommend it. Give us money. Give us money, back. it said. All right. And we're going to be putting some Amazon affiliate links down, down in, so you can order stuff too. Um, like I said, that's for your convenience. You know, if you want to do it, great. If you want to just go otherwise, that's fine too. We're just doing that for your convenience. Sure. Yeah, sure we are. All right, now let's talk about why, uh, sell your boosters. This is not, we talked about boosting a Wi-Fi signal, but we've decided we're going to use a cellular signal. What if you ever need to boost the cellular signal? Now, I will tell you with our travel data plan, we've been in the Keys, we've been out West, we've been... We've never really had to boost it, I think, except for once or twice. But here's your options. I think the best option is this very cheap device. You can get it right off Amazon. It's from Netgear. A MIMO antenna, which is basically a directional antenna. Um, this one suction cups to your window. You point it to the direction of the cell tower. You can just kind of move around until you find the great one. And it plugs into, not this particular one, but it plugs into your hotspot. This one doesn't have a plug-in for it, but our other hotspots do, and we have plenty. Um, so you could plug this in and, stuff, and, and basically suction cup it on your window, and it'll give you a little better antenna reception. It's not a boost. It's just a little bit more reception using a directional input. What if the directional input doesn't work? Now we're going to our booster, right? Yeah, now, we have this, a WeBoost booster, and this is the RV version. Um, and what this does is this hooks to an antenna on the roof of our RV, and it brings in the signal. And then this attaches, this little device here, to it. And uh, it has a long cord that it attaches so you can put it somewhere in the camper. And you can use this to boost your signal. So it comes in off the antenna, comes through here, then to this thing, and it boosts your antenna. Now, you would have to take your device. I got a couple of them here. And, or you could use the antennas off the travel data device I showed you. And it literally needs to be touching it. <laughs> I mean, it, it, close as you can get to it, you can't 
walk around with your cell phone and it be boosting your cell phone signal. It, it almost has to be touching, if not does have to be touching. As a matter of fact, I've held my cell phone to it like this while doing calls, and it does give you a signal boost. I have actually picked uh, this one up. This is a, a flat version of this that comes with the car. Uh, if you buy the car booster, and it will work with this. And the reason I bought it is because it's just a little easier just to lay lay your, your product right on top of it. Yeah, if I'm going to make a mess here. And that works. So let me show you how we got that set up. Um, that uh, runs through the same hole that we used that was already in existence on the ceiling. Uh, it comes down through here where you can't see it. And then it comes into right here. And we have this plug here. And so we can we screw the coaxial cable into it, and that connects to this this coaxial cable right here. So we screw it in, and then we connect this, and we're all good. It does have to plug in. I have both a 12 volt plug that works on it and a uh, a 110 AC plug that works on it, because you can buy the 12 volt. You have to order it separately. Don't really need it anymore now that we have the inverter, but we have that. How often do we use the booster? Very, very seldom. Um, we really just haven't had to since we've got the travel data. Before, yes. Since then, we really, it's rare we have to hook it up. Um, if I was using it a lot, I think I would probably go ahead and install it behind the television like I did the Wi-Fi booster or maybe even behind my radio in this cabinet so I wouldn't have to hook it up out here and have it sitting here and cables going everywhere. Uh, so that's... That's uh, how we boost our Wi-Fi. How does it work, Make it. Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. No idea. So the next thing is a couple things that I think we've used for our uh, our computer station setup. Yeah. Well, you want to talk about printing? Sure. And stuff? Yeah, sure. So one of the things that we do is once we're set up, we have a box right here. This actually lives here between printing jobs, but it, and it lives under the bed when we're traveling. But let's take it out. All right, this is an HP printer. Um, it is works very easily. It works off an app on your phone or your computer, and it works off Wi-Fi. So if I say print for my phone or my computer, it just automatically prints. Um, and it's set up automatically to work off the router, the uh, Wi-Fi extender. So as long as our devices are connected to there, it works. It prints really fast. I think I have some video of it I will show you. It also scans or can be used to fax. So it's a very handy and kind of show you what it is. It's the Office Jet 250 mobile all-in-one. It has met all of our needs. It prints color. Uh, to be honest, I'm just really impressed with it. Highly recommend it. <laughs> Best Christmas pageant ever, Bob. There's your homework. Everything's wirelessly. This is your laptop is computed to our router, which is behind the television, and the printer automatically connects to the router and is on the network. And that works, right, hon? Yeah, that's hard. Right. Now, one of the last things that really is important for an office for me is when I open up my laptop. It's hard to work on just this screen. Um, I need to be able to see two screens to work like I do when I'm in my home office. So if you'll notice these little magnets, that's so I can attach this secondary screen. And it works very well, and I highly recommend it. All right, after you get it hooked up, which just takes literally just snap it on and turn it on, and it works very well. So now you have two computers or two computer screens, and you have that big office feel without having to carry around a big extra monitor. It just slides right in and out of the back. And um, that's all. That's all, folks. That's the movie what you should say. Um, well, uh, anyway, that's it for today. Um, we're gonna have more entertaining videos later. You know, this was more informational. Also, um, we're gonna put links for your convenience in the description of all the stuff in this video, so you could just get, go get it if you want. And yeah, see ya.